Uh, I didn't put everybody's name on this because I figured they could decide if they wanted to have credit for the project <laughs> or not. Um, yeah, so Matthias is giving himself credit. I want to thank, I do want to thank Matthias and Vlad and Jeremy and um, who else helped us? Oh no, that's not the slide. Sorry, I had the wrong, had the wrong slide up there. Um, so one of the things that's valuable about a hackathon is to understand the space of what we're trying to achieve. We were trying to attack a problem and we came in saying, hey, we have all this data where we had done automated beat tracking on, a num on the Beethoven's Fifth Symphony uh, as conducted by Carion in various recordings. And the goal is sort of how do we help computers understand musical performance? So when we went to that recording, what we discovered when we did the mathematical analysis um, last night was that the, um, and I'll show you various spectrograms of what we discovered. So here is the spectrogram of the well-tempered clavier played by, um, played by a piano. And you can see these regular, um, you can see the regular lines here of the onsets. And in fact, Sonic Visualizer, if you're playing this by a pianist, um, if you're doing this, they have a beat tracker. Um, and the, this is kind of nice to show you. So this beat tracker finds it. No problem, right? Um, that's a, and uh, again, you know, unsurprisingly, you have the same fugue as played by a harpsichordist. Right, and it will discover, oops, right, so the harpsichordist here is slowing a little bit down to the cadence. Whoops, right. So that's one of the challenges, is the computers don't know when they're listening to this audio signals where these cadences might be. The idea is to teach a computer, hey, if I'm getting to this cadence, how do I slow down the music when I'm performing it? Or if I'm analyzing Carion over the years, how do I see when Carion slows down or speeds up at various places in the orchestral music? Now, the problem that we had when using Carion is Carion wasn't a pianist or harpsichordist on stage. He was conducting a large orchestra. And the spectrographs, when you take, you know, so the, here's the harpsichord music, it detected twice as many. Now these are not the same program. This is the Librosa beat tracking, and it saw the same pattern of every single note on that harpsichord because of the percussive nature of the instrument. All of the eighth notes got tagged as onsets with the harpsichord, whereas the quarter notes were being tagged as onsets with the piano. But now let's take a look at Beethoven, the first 16 seconds of the Beethoven Fifth Symphony. So you can see the, here the da 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 da, 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 right? And then this quietness here, da, 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 we're not getting any of that in the onset tracking. So what ends up happening is the onset tracking gets pretty confused because of the, the, the fairly um, non-percussive nature of string orchestral music. And in terms of data analytics, this made it impossible for the computer to, f to give us enough information to go on to then link the information from the recordings into the information in the symbolic music representation that we had from Music XML. Um, this is an example of a Renaissance piece of, this is a taverner motet, um, which I'll just play. Um, How are you going to find the onsets in that? Right. S sorry, Matthias? Right, it's difficult for people. But people could do it. I mean, if you're a Renaissance singer, you would be able to say, okay, here's where those beats are in that. Um, on the other hand, um, this is a piece of orchestral music. Um, first 16 seconds of a movement. 
famous orchestral piece, very rhythmic. Any ideas? It's called a dance. Somebody's going to get it now. Sorry? Yeah, it's Stravinsky. All right, so, oops, there we go. Am I going to get this right? No. There we go. So, with the Rite of Spring, this recording, no problem with an orchestra. So beat tracking was not a problem for Librosa with that, uh, that element of music. So what did we learn from this? And what, what were we trying to do? And kind of what did we learn from that? Um, on my keynote. So that was the goal. And what were the applications that we think are important here? One is, how do we play music back? Um, computational applications, how do we analyze music over the years? We've got all these recordings by various performers. If we could do a better job of beat tracking with that music, we might be able to do some interesting longitudinal surveys across time or latitudinal surveys. About, you know, how do German harpsichordists play this? How do American harpsichordists play this? How do South Americans play this? And so you you know, being able to apply large amounts of data to these interesting stylistic questions could have musicological value, performer identification, and even in pedagogy, you can have a student play the music and then you have an expert system say, you know, hey, you're really waiting too long here at these cadences. You know, you're sounding a little bit affected in the way that you're doing these cadences. The computer can say that to a student. So there's some interesting implications there. So what we wanted to do was this. We wanted to assemble a corpus of music with the performance data which we thought Librosa could help us do. But the problem was it couldn't because the system just wasn't, you know, wasn't uh, trained enough yet to find the beats in something as complex as Beethoven V. And then take that, co combine that with the music XML data so we have then a sequence of events where we know in the symbolic data for every note in the symphony what was the, what was the rhythm of the notes that were being played by the symphony. When did Carrion speed up? When did he slow down? When did he get louder? When did he get softer? Those are things that we would like to annotate the symbolic data with. And then that would help us then to teach computers how to perform music. And what is this, right? We talk about that when. And there's, there's, it turns out there's a ton of this if you go to keyboard and orchestral music, which you talked about. Harpsichordists and organists can't change the attack of a note. So there's much more tempo change in a harpsichord performance than a piano performance of the same Bach fugue. If you're playing Lully, suddenly all these things that look like eighth notes should not be performed as eighth notes. And, the, and being able to both understand that in transcription, but also being able to play that back in a natural way is something that we'd like to be able to do. And then the manners, right? You have all of these stylistic articulation and dynamic information that simply isn't in a score. In a Beethoven sonata, if I'm playing chordal, you know, that you take the pathetique sonata, uh, last movement, uh, you, it's uh, written in piano, but you're not going to play all the notes the same. But the middle movement, you're playing chords with the right hand, and different notes in the same hand have very different volume. And that's never captured in a score. That's a piece of pianistic interpretation that's taught by piano teachers to students over centuries. So here's what we found. Percussive frequencies matter a lot. If we're doing Stravinsky, Rite of Spring, no problem finding the beats. But with taverner motets or with something like the Fifth Symphony where you have a lot of string without percussion, it's hard to find the beats. And humans is probably a good compromise for that. So you know, in future work, what we were thinking about doing is having humans lay down beat tracks for these recordings. Because humans are very good at that. And then that would give us a basis for doing the machine learning on where the beats are. And theoretically, that would also help us in the future if we can get the humans to seed that and computers are better about identifying where beats are in real music, you might be able to train computers to be better at finding the beat than they currently are.